What we're going to be going through here is governmental accounting for expenditures using the encumbrance system. And we use the encumbrance system when we have purchase commitments or contracts that we enter into. Okay, so we're going to be going through a basic example here. We're going to have the city here and they're going to be ordering some supplies inventory here. And they're going to have to set up an encumbrance system here for ordering those supplies and receiving those supplies inventories. So when we're talking about the encumbrance system here, this is where we're going to be having to really set up three special uh, three accounts here that we have to deal with here along with our payables and our expenses so let's just start with uh, first account here this is where we're going to have the unreserved fund balance undesignated fund balance and this is going to be for the budgeted amount here that we have for these that supplies inventories that we're going to be purchasing for the year here so uh, you can look at this unreserved uh, uh, fund balance here it's sort of like as retained earnings or on the equity side of the equation here if you're looking at uh, profit accounting or corporate accounting but we're dealing with government accounting here so we set up this unreserved fund balance account undesignated here as well so we're going to credit it for the budget budgeted amount here for those supplies that we're going to purchase for the year here at $100,000, for example. Now, this is where we have to set up this encumbrances control account for the estimated expenditures that we're going to make. And this acts as a contra account to the reserve fund balance. So if you look at your debits and credits, you're going to see their opposite here. So for the, uh, for the encumbrance control account, your debit plus here, uh, debit minus up here for the uh, reserve uh, unreserved fund balance and same with the credits here opposite now along with this encumbrance control account here we set up a fund balance reserved for these encumbrances whatever encumbrance we have here we have to set up this fund balance reserve so essentially this fund balance reserve account here is setting aside whatever our un whatever we're whatever they have whatever we have for encumbrances or for what we're going to issue here in purchase orders uh, or make commitments here this uh, fund balance reserve sets aside the amounts that we have in the unreserved fund balance and we'll go through a basic example here and what we're going to do here with this encumbrance control account we're going to set up of uh, that initial amount that we're going to have here as uh, uh, purchase orders that we're going to issue here and let's just go through it maybe we'll start it right here and we'll go through it and we're going to look at that we're going to issue some purchase orders here or we're going to issue some purchase orders or make a a, a, a commitment here for eighty two thousand dollars worth so we debit our encumbrances control account here for eighty two thousand and then we go to our fund balance reserve for these encumbrances and we're going to credit it here for eighty two thousand dollars okay so fine we set up our a control account here for against our unreserved fund balance here and then we also had to set up this fund balance reserved here for these encumbrances here okay so we've taken care of that now let's go down here and then this is the idea of what works here at the end what how this encumbrance control account works so when you actually get billed for whatever purchase orders you've issued here when you get billed and you receive these purchase or receive the materials in this case those expense supply items here you would credit you reduce your encumbrances control account for the actual amount or the original amount that you estimated for those encumbrances and then you can also reduce the fund balance reserve by those amounts here so you're not going to have to since you've already got billed and received them you no longer going to have that you're going to reduce your control account here and you're going to also reduce the fund balance reserve for those um, uh, supplies here but we can do that here we reduce those because those uh, those supplies are going to actually go to the expense our expense your inventory expense here the expenditures control account here using our governmental accounting and those expenditures control account directly reduce the unreserved fund balance amount. So you no longer need your encumbrance balances here and you're going to reduce both the encumbrance amount here for the estimated expenditures here, estimated expenditures here, and also the fund balance reserve. And then at the end of the period here, we're going to be closing these accounts out here and then that's going to affect our unreserved uh, unreserved fund balance okay so let's just go through our example here we talked about the fact here that we had a budgeted amount here of a hundred thousand dollars for those supplies and now we issued some purchase orders here of eighty two thousand dollars worth here so we're going to debit our encumbrance control account again for eighty two thousand here and then we're going to credit our fund balance reserve for these encumbrances here for eighty two thousand dollars now this is where 
now we're going to have received here. We're going to get billed and received for some of those purchase orders that we issued here. Now this is where we're going to move down here and this is where we're, it's going to be tied into our vouchers payable, our liability account here for those uh, purchase orders that we issued here. Uh, and then we're going to also, along with our vouchers payable, this is where that expenditures control account comes into play here. So the expenditures control account, again, for these inventory, it's an expense item here for those inventories. This expenditures control account is going to directly reduce the fund balance. So let's go up and let's look at the case here. Let's just follow through these numbers here. Let's go here. Let's look at, uh, go down here and look at it. Excuse me. Here we're going to be billed for $75,000 worth of inventory we originally estimated to cost us $71,000. So this is the key here. We move up to our encumbrances control account and we're going to reduce it by $71,000 here. Credit it for $71,000. We're also going to take our fund balance reserve and debit it or reduce it here for $71,000 for the inventory that we now have billed and received here. So we have no longer any encumbrances against that. We received it here. And what we want to note here, we reverse this estimated original amount here. This is the estimated original amount, not what we're actually paying for, though. We're not what we're actually being billed for, but that was our original estimated amount here. We're going to reduce our control and our uh, fund balance reserve by the original amount because you no longer lead, need uh, no longer need these uh, in co these controls here because the, it be, it's going to be expensed here and it's going to go into the expense here expense control account here and it's going to reduce those fund balances that we talked about okay so now we let's just say we've got this seventy one thousand here that um, the original amount that we estimated now if we go down to our this is where we get into our vouchers payable our liability account here in our expenditures control so uh, we had the uh, 71,000 here uh, reduction in our control account and our reserved here for, for fund balance now the entries for our vouchers payable we're going to credit that here for $75,000 that was the actual uh, bill he, uh, bill we're actually being billed for that those inventory expense items here for 75,000 so credit and increase your liability here vouchers payable for 75,000 and then the debit goes to the expenditures control account here for $75,000 the actual billed amount here so you can see or uh, original estimate reduces our encumbrances control in our fund balance and then the actual uh, billed amount here increases our vouchers payable and also our expenditures control. So here we increase our expenditures and uh, we also set up our liability. Therefore, we can reduce our encumbrances and our fund balance reserve because we're going to recognize that as expenses here that are going to go directly to that unreserved fund balance. Okay, so we've taken care of the 75,000 here in our payable here. That was the actual build amount for those inventories. Now, this is the key here. We were billed. We recognize them as expenses here, but now those vouchers are being actually approved here for the actual amount, 75,000. So now we would debit or reduce our payable here by 75,000, and then our cash account, we'd have to go over here and credit it here for $75,000. Okay, so we've taken care of that amount here. Now let's just go look at one other item here. Let's go down and, okay, we've taken care of our, you, just remember, build amount here, that is what, when we get billed and receive it, that goes against our expenses here and our payable, and then when we approve it, then we can reduce our payable here and also reduce our cash. Now let's look at this special item here, uh, look at it here, eight, X item, the special item was delivered with a bill of $6,500, but not approved, so just going back here, let's, we did what we go back to our control account we're going to reduce it here by six thousand dollars it originally cost we originally estimated it to cost six thousand dollars so use your original you reduce your income your encumbrances control by six thousand and your fund balance reserved here by six thousand but then going down to your payables then you got to increase or credit or increase your vouchers payable by the actual amount that we delivered price or the bill price here 6500 and then your expenses control here by 6500 okay same as we did above here for that first amount here that we for our first uh, 
items that we received here in supplies inventory. But the key is, the point is here, the invoice payment is not approved. So if it, we didn't yet approve that invoice payment, therefore we cannot reduce our vouchers payable or reduce our cash until it is approved. That's the only point I'm trying to make. And then one other item here, let's go and look at it. The ending inventory on hand is $2,000 and we have to adjust our expense for that here. Uh, and the ending inventory 2000 here were for supplies of inventory purchased during that period. So that was some of that original amount that we purchased here of $75,000 worth of inventory supplies. So what you have to do, go up to your expenditures control account here and what you want to do here is you want to reduce that expense by the amount that we have on hand here. Reduce your expense or your expenditures control by $2,000 because they're still remaining on hand. So what we want to do here is we want to just look at our net amounts here at the end of the period here. So we had our debits or increases in our expenses here with $75,000 and also that $6,500 based on the actual build amount for those uh, uh, supplies, the inventories that we bought here. But we reduce it here or credit or reduce our control account by the $2,000 that's still remaining on hand. So our net amount that's going to be sitting here is going to actually be $79,500. But I'm just showing it as a credit here, that would be the net balance that we have here based on our debits and credits. We're going to close it out here, 79,500. So let's go up and let's look at how this how this expenditures control gets go moves over into the unreserved fund balance. Okay, moving up to our unreserved fund balance. Okay, let's look at our uh, closing entries here. We had a budget at 100,000 here for the year here. Our expense that we actually recognize for the year here, we, uh, it's going to be a reduction to the unreserved fund balance. We had a we had to credit it here to remove it from our expenditures control account here. If we move over here for our closing entries, and then where our debit would go to unreserved fund balance here for seventy nine thousand five hundred. Now the last thing we have to deal with is that encumbrances control account here. So if we net our debits against our credits, we're going to end up with an ending balance of five thousand here in our expenditures control account, and we're also got that with debit amount here, and we're also going to have a credit amount here in a fund balance reserved for those encumbrances of $5,000. And those represent the outstanding POs, inventory not yet delivered. So that's just setting our outstanding POs that we have to set, a, set aside some fund balance reserved for those outstanding re, uh, uh, POs here and they're not yet delivered. And it also leaves some encumbrance here uh, uh, as a contra to our unreserved fund balance of 5,000. So our closing entries would be to credit our encumbrances control for $5,000 and then the associated debit would go to the unreserved fund balance undesignated here for $5,000. So ending up for the end of the period here, netting our debits against our credits, we're going to end up with a credit balance here of $15,500. So that's what we're sitting here. It's unreserved uh, fund balance in its undesignated. So nothing's been designated, no encumbrances against this $15,500. Okay, so we just to go back and understand it a little bit more here. Again, this encumbrances control account, that's an offset or a contra account to the unreserved fund balance. And when you, uh, the unreserved, uh, the encumbrance control account has an associated fund balance reserves for these encumbrances. So that this fund balance, any encumbrances that we have here are going to be set aside in a, a fund balance reserve for the encumbrances and the fund balance reserve for the encumbrances essentially uh, offsets any, any of these unreserved fund balances here are now set and reserved here for any uh, encumbrances that we have. And then uh, just remember here when you're uh, removing these encumbrances, you actually are build and receive, in this case, those inventory items. You, re you uh, credit or reduce your encumbrances control and your fund balance by the original estimated amount here because they're not going to be no longer needed since it's going to be recognized expense, which is going to reduce your fund balance. You're going to re directly reducing your unreserved fund balance. And then one other thing here. When we tie it into our vouchers payable and our expenditures control, remember our voucher, our ex 
expenditures control and our unreserved fund balance here are based on the original amounts here, while our vouchers payable and our expenditures control the actual expenses here are based on the actual billed amounts. Okay, so that's all you want to do. You just have to make these entries here, looking at our entry six here. Uh, when we had that encumbrances control, we reduced it here by 71,000, and we also reduced our fund balance here by 71,000. But then we had to go down to our vouchers payable. We had to credit that here by 75,000, the actual build amount here, and we also had to debit our expenditures control here by $75,000. Okay, so that's basically how this uh, encumbrance system works here for purchase commitments and contracts. And let's just finish it off here by going and just looking at these fund balances here. So this is how you could calculate your fund balances just based on our ending balances. So let's say we got, you take that reserve for encumbrances here. Let's say that was at 5,000 there. That's the fund balance reserve for encumbrances. That ending balance here, that was that $5,000. Those are the still the outstanding purchase orders here. So that we would have at 5,000 here. Now we have to take our unreserved, undesignated fund balance. We've got what, 16 balance sitting here, 15,500 in it. Then we have to subtract out our less of any encumbrances that we have. And what were those? Those were 5,000 here. Moving our S encumbrance control account, we have 5,000 sitting in it. So netting our unreserved, undesignated against this encumbrances control, which is a contract count here, we end up with what net amount here of $10,500. So you can see the unreserved, undesignated is being uh, reduced here by this contra account here, the encumbrances. $10,500, add that to the reserve for encumbrances of 5,000 here, net total fund balance is 15,500. So you can just go through it in this way, uh, looking at it in these terms here. And if you look at the total fund balance here that we calculated 15,500, of course it, res it matches the unreserved fund balance here, undesignated amount here of 15,500. So this unreserved fund balance, undesignated amount, remember looking at its debit its credits, it sort of acts as retained earnings uh, for uh, the equity side of the balance sheet here when we're talking about for-profit companies here. But in this case, we're looking at uh, this governmental accounting where we have to set up this encumbrance system here and we have to just follow through. I'm showing, I was showing everything in T-Account 4, but follow through those titles that we have here in each T-Account. And that really gives you a good understanding here or should give you an understanding here for governmental accounting for expenditures using this encumbrance system. All right, so that'll summarize our topic.